My name's Joe, by the way. How are you guys? I'm with Douglas Labs. So we're going to be talking about a couple. I know if you've been here before or you listen to Dr. Ryan on the radio, I'm a very big fan of the Occitone, the L-carnosine for the eyes. We're going to give a brief overview. We also have a couple new eye supplements. The Mackey Shield is changing, so that's the big reason for this talk. But we're also going to talk about some lutein, zeaxanthin, and fish oil, how it helps your eyes. Very informal. Have a question during. Raise your hand. We'll get it to you. Um, that's it. So let's get started. So I brought this up because I get this question more and more, who we are. We're part of Atrium Innovations. We have all these, we are part, sister and brother companies with all these companies here. So Douglas Labs is part of a bigger brand. So I just want to kind of, I always usually get that question. I start adding that in just, uh, just for clarification purposes. Back to eyes. Let's talk about statistics here. 2012 National Health Survey, okay? 20.6 Adults in, the Ameri in, in America, 18 or older, experience some sort of vision loss. Now, we're, this, is, this is mild vision loss, so we're talking knee glasses, knee contacts. When you have glasses or contacts, the problem is rectified. About 15 million Americans have what we call significant vision loss. So what do we mean by that? That means even with their glasses or the contacts, they're still having problems seeing or you know, carrying out normal day-to-day, -day, and this goes all the way from these people all the way to the people who are actually legally blind, okay? Now, do this research. They have all the, they broke, this, this survey actually broke down in a ton of different categories. They broke it down by race, how much money you make, uh, age, and the one that I found most, most peculiar was they broke it down by how, where you live. So three million people live in the Northeast, about 4.8 million live in the Midwest and 4.8 million live in the, in the West. 8.1 million people live in the Southwest. That's the one that sticks out because that's double the rest of those numbers, okay? Now, we're going to get into that, but that's due to the sun and UV, okay? So we're going to get into that a little more in depth, but I want you guys to keep that figure in the back of your mind that if you live in the South, you are twice as more apt to get some sort of macular degeneration cataract or experience some sort of eye issue. Okay. So, this is from an Amer the American, Asso American Association of Optometrists, okay? It's from August 2011. So, how many people in the U.S. have cataract? About 22 million people in the U.S. have suffered from cataract cataracts. Age-related macular degeneration, clarified, diagnosed, about 2 million. Dry eye is prevalent in our country, and it incre your, it your chance to have this increases as you age. So, about 3.2 million women and 1.6 million men. Another funny thing that I forgot to kind of got ahead of myself is women actually have more double the chance to, to having some sort of eye issue as they age the men. So we're set about 3.2 million women dry eye, 1.68 million men. Couldn't tell you why but I just thought it was very interesting, right? So what do we call visually impaired? Again, we're talking about somebody who has those contacts, has those glasses, still can't see, still having a rough time. 40, 40 and older, you're talking about 3.6 million in the U.S. So that's, that's worse than 40, 20, 40 or worse vision, okay? Legally blind, less than a million people in the U.S., okay? So it's a big epidemic. Everyone has problems with their eyes. You just saw I had glasses on. I see a couple people with glasses on, contacts. So it is something that everyone suffers from. So talk about AMD. When I say AMD, I'm going to reference age-related macular degeneration or macular degeneration. When you go and your optometrist ophthalmologist, one of the questions they ask you is, do you have any history of AMD in your family? Okay. So what is AMD? AMD breaks down the layer of tissue in your cell called the retina, which is in the back of your eye. Okay. Now this is what provides sharp central vision. So you need this for reading. You need this for seeing Jerry tape me on the camera. You need to read a board to drive, to focus, see someone's face when you're having a conversation with you. So if you're suffering from AMD, the odds are you're probably going to be able to have this nice big blur right in your eyes, okay? Advanced AMD can actually lead to vision loss. So this is something that's pretty serious. We go from a blur to not being able to see at all. About 2 million Americans have it, which again, we already went through, but about 8 million Americans are actually at risk, okay? What are the risk factors? Age, genes, family history, like we said, doctor always asks. Do you have any family history of this? Smoking, if you have a lighter eye color, again, due to the UV, due to the sun, you're at a higher risk of AMD than someone like me with dark brown eyes. 
um, obesity, high blood pressure, and also some drug side effects. Now, what causes AMD? Light radiation is the number one cause of AM AMD. So we're talking UV light, exposure to UV light without sunglasses, contacts, things like that. Oxygen damage, which is free radical damage. So that's as we age, we, are, we have oxidative stress on our bodies. Our eyes are very susceptible to oxidative stress. So when we get into the formulas a little bit later, you're gonna see a lot of talk about antioxidant and antioxidant production. That's because oxygen damage is a really big culprit for eye damage as we age. Genes, again, family history. Stress can have a big pro role of your declining eyes as well as your diet. So diet's very important, just like it is in all areas of life. AMD, two forms, very, very simple. There is wet AMD, there is dry AMD. Dry AMD is when you have the macula and you have these things called drusens, which is accumulate from cell death and they cause black spots and they distort your vision. Wet AMD, a lot more serious. Only a, small, only a small percentage of the patient population had that, about 10 to 15%. And what happens is your eye, these blood vessels form that are abnormal, only see them in this case, and they start to leak, which the leakage lays on the macula and ultimately distorts your vision. And we're talking about, we're trying to remember, another thing before I get ahead of myself, we're trying to prevent all this. So this is all proactive. Now if you have AMD, this can be, for if you have dry AMD, we can, you might see some significant results with these. If you have wet AMD, you're gonna have to go a totally different route. So we're doing pro, or before, and dry AMD only, okay? Let's talk about blue light and light radiation. Remember, we said light radiation is the number one cause for AMD, period. So. Lutein and zeaxanthin, very powerful antioxidants. They have, right, between, right behind the retina, that is, they have the highest concentration in the body, is lutein and zeaxanthin. You, you can't find it in any higher levels anywhere else in the body than your eye, okay? That is in the macula, and that's why it's important when you see any sort of ocular, ocular formula, it's usually high in lutein and zeaxanthin. So why is that? Well, let me tell you. So we have this light scale, right? So Who's here, who's here has heard of blue light? Very big on the news, very big buzzword. So we have blue light. To the left of blue light, you have low energy, less damaging. This is the, this is the light on the spectrum that is gonna hit your eye, not gonna damage it. Filtered by the retina, not a problem. On the other side, you have higher than blue light, and this is gonna be filtered by the cornea and the lens. Again, not gonna damage your light. Now this is Different than being UV and wearing sunglasses, we're not talking about this, we're talking about blue light and this spectrum. Now, there is a gap where you're not protected by the retina and not protected by the cornea and the lens, and the only thing protecting your eye is that sack of lutein and zeaxanthin behind your eye. That's what's gonna protect it. So that's why lutein and zeaxanthin are very, very important in, in nutrients or in supplementing your, for ocular health, okay? So they're like your internal sunglasses. They did studies where people, they would flash blue light at someone. So if you're coming down the road late at night in your car and somebody has those new blue headlights and then you get flashed and then you look and you see spots, okay? So they did studies where they flashed somebody and they would measure how long they saw the spots and how, how, what degree their initial reaction was. When they supplemented with lutein and zeaxanthin, they found that their initial reaction was much was diminished compared to non-supplementing, and the spots actually were were um, didn't last as long compared to non-supplementation. So that's what we're talking about. That blue light. Now, obviously, that's not only the only form of blue light, but that's a very good example of the blue light. Questions? I see a lot of nodding heads, which is good. So where do we come up with all this? Where are we getting all this? Okay, the National Eye Institute, which is a federal government they did this study called AREDS-2. They did AREDS-1, which Octone, Mackey Shield are based off of. So AREDS-2 was a five-year study, about 3,600 participants, 55 to 80 was their age range, okay? Every day they supplemented them with 500 milligrams of vitamin C, 400 IUs of vitamin E, I have it right in front of me. Uh, they did two groups of zinc oxide, 80, 80 milligrams and 25 milligrams. They did two milligrams of copper, 10 milligrams of lutein, two milligrams of zeaxanthin, they did a thousand milligrams of omega-3s, and they actually didn't do any beta carotene. Because it actually, comp we, they found that if you supplement with beta carotene, it actually competes with the carotenoid or the antioxidant, competes 
space for, for space with them. So if you have beta carotene they're, and the carotenoids, they're all fighting for the same space so the carotenoids don't become as absorbed, and, absorbed as much and those are the ones you really want absorbed, okay? So what did they find? They found that after a five-year test, which is a very long test, by the way, that patients who supplemented with the items you see on the screen here behind me were 25% less likely to get AMD, which is big because nine times out of ten, I think it's more than half, after the age of 80, more than half of us are all going to have some sort of problems with our eyes. So after you hit, the turn, after you hit 80, over half the people in this room are going to have some sort of problems with their eyes. So very, very good to be proactive, which brings us to... Ultra Brenner Division. So we had MacuShield. MacuShield was our old kind of multivitamin for the eye. This is a true multivitamin mineral for ocular health. This is going to replace a multivitamin and your eye supplement into one. So we're taking two products into one. Okay? So what's in it? We have vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D3, vitamin E, uh, thiamine, riboflavin. She has some good B vitamins in there. The big ones that I want everyone to focus on is there's 500 milligrams of taurine, there's 100 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine, there's 15 milligrams of bilberry fruit, very good antioxidant, 4 milligrams of zeaxanthin, 12 milligrams of lutein. So again, you want that 3 to 1 lutein to zeaxanthin, that's what was studied, okay? Selenium and zinc is the other one for the eye health. So it's a multivitamin and an eye formula all wrapped up into one, okay? And we kind of already talked about that. So multivitamin, again, lutein, zeaxanthin, three to one ratio. Uh, we have the vitamin C, alpha lipoic acid, green tea. It also has some resveratrol in there too. Very good anti-aging, another good antioxidant. Um, and all the vitamins that are in here are all methylated, meaning the fact that they are directly absorbed by the body. You don't need to take them and your body doesn't need to change it in order to be absorbed. It's directly absorbed by the body. So let's talk about some of the ones specifically for eye health, how they go. So we talked about the flavonoids. These are, we have bilberry extract, grapeseed, resveratrol, green tea, green tea. These are all antioxidants. This is, again, we're talking about that antioxidant defense, oxidative damage. This is, where, this is what's going to help protect against that. Carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin. We kind of already got into that. But it's, this is direct from the AREDS too. This is directly the, the levels they use. Three to one. Remember, we want to, we want to, strengthen our internal sunglasses as much as we possibly can. Vitamin A, this functions as, as in the retinal cells as light receptors and also supports really good night vision too. So that's why vitamin A is in there. Uh, zinc, found in very high concentrations in the ocular tissue and it is in a cofactor for superoxide dismutase. Now this removes a, super, a dangerous superoxide radical. So zinc, another powerful antioxidant. See there's a reoccurring theme here. A lot of antioxidant support for the eyes. N-acetylcysteine and selenium, they help maintain levels of glutathione. Also remove some really bad free radical damages. And taurine, which is the most abundant amino acid in, found in ocular tissue, helps stabilize neuromembranes in the retinal cells and actually helps with photoreceptor activity as well. Okay? So that specifically in terms of the eye, the rest of the things that are in there are all going to complement that and also substitute for your multivitamin. So again, we're taking multivitamin, eye supplement, wrapping them all into one. So just like we said, all in one, these are capsules too. So if you have any issue taking pills, they're not tablets, they're capsules. They're four a day. There's 120 in a bottle, so it's a month supply. Uh, all the vitamins in there are methylated, so again, for absorption, bioavailable. Uh, the lutein's in 301, and copper and iron free, and no beta carotene, so if you do smoke, you can't take this. Plus, you don't have to fight for carotenoid absorption. Anybody can take this, adults of all ages, looking to kind of beef up their ocular uh, regimen. Anybody who has AMD, obviously, um, and whoever has a diet low in carotenoid or flavonoid, so if you're not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, not really want to supplement additionally, this would be this would be something for you. And this should have been moved. I'm sorry, I kind of threw this together when I was half asleep last night. But lutein and zeaxanthin, they actually form, they actually strengthen the membranes of the cell, and that's actually how they that's actually how they protect against that UV light. So they actually block the UV light. That's this is just a a slide kind of uh, exhibiting that. So. Questions on UP Vision, AMD? 
Nothing. Okay. Cool. Who? Anybody here has dry eye? Dry sport? Dry eye? Okay. Got one. A lot of studies, a lot of research. Recently, they all, they, everyone thought that it was a, it was a tear issue. Didn't, weren't generating enough tears. That's what dry, that's what causes dry eye. A lot of recent research has seen that it's actually an inflammation in the eye which causes dry eye. So your eye becomes inflamed and then it's not tearing properly. That's why you have dry eye. Talked about earlier, dry eye, very prevalent. A lot of people suffer from it. A lot of people suffer from it and don't know because they're not technically diagnosed. Um, but I'm sure everyone's had a day where they feel like their eyes are a little bit drier than they are. Um, so we have this product. It's not out yet. It's new. But I kind of want to talk about dry eye a little bit. And a lot of this will be, will transcend into the fact that there are a lot of fish oil that Dr. Weiner carries. I'm sure they're going to get this product in. However, we can also, you guys can use a fish oil too. So it's going to be a lot. We're not going to focus too much on this product. We're going to focus more along the lines of the fish oils. Uh, it'll be sometime after the new year, okay? And we can skip over that one. Okay, so dry eye. What is dry eye? Dry eye is when your eyes are dry. Dry, itchy, irritated, itchy, burning sensation, um, and it also comes, sometimes comes with blurred vision. So technically, that's what dry eye is. So tears are actually made up of three layers. You have oil, you have water, and then you have mucus in that order. The oil is on top of the water because the oil protects from the air to make sure the water doesn't evaporate. The mucus is on the bottom of the oil to make sure that the, the mucus or your water evenly distributes all over, the, all over the front of your eye. So if any one of those is out of, out of line, you probably are suffering from some sort of dry eye. Now, dry eye could be genetic. It could be due to diet, but a lot of it's normally due towards climate. So a lot of us up here in the Northeast where it's nice and humid and it's always rainy, we really don't have that. But if you go to the Southwest, south you're a little bit more apt to find it and so um, contact lenses dead giveaway sometimes that'll give you dry eye that's pretty self-explanatory um, definitely some eye surge eye surgeries certain type of medications can cause dry eye obviously nutritional deficiency and normal aging and another one too that that I don't know if I went through this or not but if you sit in an office and you're staring at a computer screen for a while that's another dry eye cause and what it does is because you don't blink enough therefore your tears get all remember we talked about that oil water and mucus that gets out of line don't blink enough and then your eyes become dry so omega fatty acids I'll spare everyone the fish oil uh, refresher but omega-3 fatty acids fish oil EPA DHA that's what we want if you're looking at a fish oil and you see a hundred in a capsule <clears throat> or a hundred soft gels or a thousand soft gels for ten bucks, check the back of the label. You're probably not getting a lot of EPA, DHA. That's the quantifiable fish oil that's actually used by the body. We want high levels of EPA, DHA. Most healthcare practitioners recommend a gram of fish oil per day. So 600 milligrams of EPA, 400 milligrams of DHA. And most professional brands are going to have somewhere in the general vicinity of that dosage per day. Okay, so EPA, DHA, GLA, GLA is just a form of <clears throat> linoleic acid, promotes, promotes moisture retention in the eye and also helps balance anti-inflammation anti inflama in the eye. Remember, omega-3s, very anti-inflammatory. These are anti-inflammatory acids, so they're going to take down the inflammation everywhere in your body, and since dry eye is the inflammation of the eye, it's going to benefit from that. So, Promotes moisture retention. Just making sure I got everything on this page here. Uh, EPA and DHA also promote healthy prostaglandin and cytokine balance. Again, we're talking about the, making sure your, your tears are secreting in normally. Um, and they've actually done studies where omega threes and sixes both re both um, uh, both reduce the conjunctival, which is in your eye, uh, inflammatory marker in humans. So again, there's just some study behind this. The nice thing about our this eye moisture support is it's a triglyceride form, so it means it's more easily absorbed, and it's also super critical, so it's a little bit pure. Um, if you suffer from, you know, like me, if I take fish, fish oil, I swallow it, I get the burps, uh, I get really bad heartburn, it's like I'm breathing fire fish, it's no bueno. So this is a super critical extraction, so very clean, very pure form of fish oil. If you have the burps, you won't get any acid indigestion from it. And the fish gelatin is actually from tilapia. So if you're a vegetarian, it's actually a completely vegetarian product. Someone is very excited about fish oil back there. 
In addition to the eye moisture support, uh, it's just official in the eye moisture support. It also has astaxanthin, another buzz nutrient. Very a lot of good press coming out on that. This is the most potent uh, free radical carotenoid in in existence. Period. Uh, this is directly absorbable by the body. It crosses the blood vein barrier uh, and the blood retinal barrier as it pertains to eyes. Um, Animal studies have shown that supplementation with astaxanthin actually reduce the damage done from UV light and they actually recover more quickly. So again, we're talking about that blue light being flashed. Um, it also helps support uh, healthy biomarker markers, nitric oxide synthase, proxaglandin. These are all biomarkers for inflammation. So it's supporting healthy infl inflammation in the eye as well. Vitamin C protects against retinal injury from exact Excessive light energy due to antioxidant properties. Again, vitamin C, another potent antioxidant. Antioxidant damage, very prevalent in the eye. Um, vitamin A is actually film, found in that film layer in the tears. Um, that's why it's in this as well. Um, magnesium is in there, helps actually produce the tear. It, has the, it helps produce the precursor, which helps you produce tears. Um, vitamin B6 is in there because it helps absorb the, the magnesium. Um, and vitamin D3 actually has been shown to reduce retinal inflammation. So these are all things that you could obviously take separately. These are all located in this, in, in this product. But, and don't forget, uh, vitamin C through all the vitamin C, vitamin A, magnesium, B6, D3, that's all in the UP vision as well. So my point in adding this was if you're suffering from dry eye, sometimes it's as simple as, you, you know, they do the, some people recommend the drops and there's like these fancy remedies. Sometimes it's easy to supplementing additional fish oil. So that's my, that was my ultimate goal for putting it in there. So it's a comprehensive formula directed exactly to the eye. It's more than just omegas. Uh, the omega-3s are super critical. They're in triglyceride form, They're more easy, which is more easily acceptable. Uh, the gelatins from fish, uh, everything, both these products have non-GMO ingredients and they're two soft gels daily. Ah, here we go. So for someone who's, who's needing this, remember we talk about, so dry eye symptoms, obviously living in dry, dry climates, dead giveaway for dry eye, staring at the computer screens, um, contacts, and then actually, as we talked about, as you age, your chance for dry eye actually gets, gets worse. Questions? Negative, okay. Ocutone. Now, if you take UP Vision and you strike it down the middle, you have the multivitamin aspect. You have the ocular aspect. Ocutone will be just the ocular aspect. So if you're taking a multivitamin you like and you just want some more kind of nutrients to support that healthy vision as you age, Ocutone's the product for you. So that's the difference between the two. <clears throat> How many people take Ocutone here? Three. Wow. Four. Okay. It's back there. We got a lot of it in stock. Just kidding. So again, powerful antioxidant formula. You're going to see a lot of antioxidants in here. Uh, lutein, vitamin C, E, zinc, selenium, glutathione, N-acetylcysteine, taurine, bilberry extract, and grapeseed extract. Bear with me. I know this is going to be a lot of refresher, but I'll say it twice and hope you'll retain the information. So vitamin C and E, antioxidant protection. These are for the lens. Uh, excessive, excessive free radicals can actually lead to protein oxidation, which is, can, release in, it's, can actually give you cloudy, opaque vision. Uh, so vitamin C and E are going to help protect against that. <clears throat> Uh, zinc is central for signal transduction in the retina, which is the light reaction. So again, we're talking about that night driving. Um, it's also, a, we talked about the fact that it's a cofactor, it removes a, a really ultra dangerous superoxide free radical from your eye. Uh, selenium, also another cofactor. Uh, selenium is actually found in abundance in healthy eyes, and it actually that level actually diminishes as we age. So it's very, very important to, to um, and continue to supplement with selenium as we age. Taurine, we already discussed, it's the most abundant free amino acid in the ocular tissue. Um, fun functions as a membrane stabilizer, antioxidant, osmotic regulator, remember passing between the membranes, and a neurotransmitter. Uh, bilberry, it's the northern European cousin of blueberries. Uh, it provides anthinocides, which are pot potent flavonoids aka antioxidants, free radical scavengers. Um, they're recognized in abundance for their eye health. So that's why it's in here. Um, and actually, and bilberry specifically, sometimes I know we have that separately that's located here as well. Some, that actually has been shown to actually help with the blood flow in your eye, and your eye is ultimately a big sack of veins. So 
it's, it's, it helps maintain normal blood flow in the, in the fine capillary blood vessels in the eye. So your eyes getting nourishment from all the veins and the capillaries are in there. Bilberry is going to strengthen all those <clears throat> veins and capillaries. And grape seed, again, another free radical, another antioxidant. This is going to provide proanthocyanidins, another group of flavonoids. Okay, so again, we're talking about antioxidant support <clears throat> and the capillary system itself. <coughs> Excuse me. Last one, L-carnosine. Now this is a combination of two things. It's an amino acid. Um, it's comprised of alanine and histidine. And it's present in the body. It's concentrated mainly in the brain, skeletal and heart muscles, also in high concentrations in your eye as well. Um, it's been studied at length for its anti-aging properties. Um, now, L-carnosine is used primarily for floaters. And what do I mean by floaters? Floaters are groups of protein that are actually clump up in your eye <coughs> and actually float across your eye, giving you that cobweb string through the plane of sight as you, as you live. Um, L-carnosine, real, oh, got ahead of myself. Free radical damage, powerful antioxidant, but this is also the supercharged in protecting those capillaries and those blood vessels and ultimately the circulation in the eye. That's why it's recommended for the floaters. And I know Dr. Weiner talks about it all the time on the radio. <coughs> And it's one of the things that he takes along with the Occutone. And that's it. Oh, good time. What's up? Causes and treatment for cataracts and glaucoma. Gatter Gladaracts. I just, it's, it's a new thing. That's, that's a new thing. Gladaracts. It's a new thing. Glaucoma and, gla and cataracts. See, I'm done. I, I'm done speaking. I would recommend the Occutone. Uh, you could take the UP Vision if you want to replace your, your but again, anything with eye related, you're usually doing lutein, zeaxanthin, and lycopene. If, I had, if, if I'm giving you my professional opinion, I would do the UP Vision <clears throat> just because it has all three. And it also has a lot of flavonoids in it and a lot more antioxidant support. So that's what I would recommend. For both conditions? Yes. I know you came late to the party a little bit, so. Okay. Right. So the UP Vision is is a multivitamin and your eye eye nutrients. So if you're already if you want to combine two into one, you can take the UP Vision. If you like your multivitamin, I'd recommend the Occutone and the L-carnitine. But if you want to replace your multivitamin, um, <clears throat> you can do the uh, UP Vision and the L-carnitine. Carnosine. Sorry. Oh. It just depends on what you want to do. You either need the UP Vision or the Occutone. I just take a lot of supplements. So you would take the UP Vision then? Cataracts. Cataracts. I would go with you. I would go. You. Right. If you're going to go with the, with the, with the protocol for the for the floaters and the UP Vision and the L carnosine, I think you're good with that. You could supplement, right, and you can supplement additionally on the Occutone on top of it if you really wanted to to kind of supercharge everything, but you could be good with what you got. The UP Vision's four a day and the, L -carn uh, the Occutone's three a day, I'm pretty sure. But I know Doc takes six Occutone. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <coughs> yes, ma'am? Most cases, anywhere between 30 to 45 days, you're going to see results. I know that in between checkups, he said he noticed an improvement of his, of, in, his, in, the, in his eye. Um, sister was taking Occutone in between checkups. Now, granted, that's a year. She was taking it for a year, though. And she's not, uh, she's not the most disciplined when it comes to compliance. Um, and she went up. Now, she's, she's, she's pretty blind. <laughs> Uh, I mean, she she can't see with all of her contacts, but her but her contacts actually she went up, or she went down a, a prescription. So she went down a level. So her contacts didn't have to be as strong, which is a moot point because she got laser she got corrective surgery. But she did she did go down. She went down one level. Well, it took it took almost a year, but that was only because she that was the, that was the length of time that she got tested. 
So it could have been three months, could have been six months. That I couldn't tell you. I, I've never heard of them getting itchy because the, you have little bits of glaucoma flying around your eyes. So I don't know. Maybe that's what's causing your floaters if you have floaters. Of the what? The oh, carnosine? I think Doc recommends two. Yeah. <coughs> oh, dying. You're welcome. Anything else? Any other questions? I would split them up. I, I'm a big proponent of splitting my dosage up through the day. So if you have two, I would do two in the, two in the morning, two, two before dinner. And I would. And definitely the multi UV vision, definitely take with a, that's a multivitamin. Any multivitamin you want to take with food. Because if not, it will definitely upset your stomach. I have one for you. Uh, vitreous tears. Do you have anything you recommend for that? <sighs> vitreous tears. I don't think, I, don't, I couldn't tell you anything definitively. Because that's a tear. I don't know what's going to help replace those. So... Couldn't tell you. Didn't research that one enough. You give me a couple days, I'm sure I can find an answer, but I'm not going to be here the rest of the week, unfortunately. Next time, though, in vitreous tears. I had a rumbling question. Whenever you say legally blind, what's considered legally blind? I think legally blind is 2,100, 2,080. 2,080 higher, 2,100 higher. I mean, you're, you're obviously pronounced that by your optometrist ophthalmologist. But I know there is a legally blind level. I think it's I think it's 2080. Anybody else? All right. Yes. Thank you.